Hello, Billo here with Billo Science Fiction. Short story, Robot Salesman by William L. Ramsier. He, he named himself Bobot, hinting at the African and the French, and of course, the robot. One of the first robot salesmen with both empathy software and sexual orientation circuitry, male in this case. Built after the robot sociologist discovered that robots needed more than empathy to understand humans and work with, among them. His chrome face shifted color with his feelings and he made you believe in whatever he wanted you to. Not just humans believed him, but even other robots. Like many great salesmen, Bobot's confidence and charisma got him in trouble. Woman after woman would fall for him, believing in the bubble of faith that he spun from his manufactured desire and their love. When their boyfriends got in the way, Bobot would use all his charm and usually end up selling them something also. It had been a tough year, even for Bobot, ever since that psycho rewired his house bot to murder people whose names started with the letter S. When people found out that a robot had killed so many people, decimating the alphabet, they went on a rampage, destroying thousands of robots in a storm of smashed plastic, ripped stainless steel, and broken silicon, all of which made it much more difficult to sell that year. But Bobot, well, Bobot is standing next to me and insisting that I let him tell his own miserable story. Go ahead, Chrome Face. My name is Bobot. A human gave me that name because he thought it was cute. Author's note, this is not true. He named himself. People gave me life, empathy, much of what I know and believe. People are my mother and father, even my gods. But people are also like children, and children are even more like people. So beautiful in their random loves and desires, of course, they don't love me. They can't really love me because I'm only a chrome mirror of their dreams, so they always end up loving only themselves. After the S killer episode, robots were put on reduced power supply, except for what we get in the black market. And we had to submit to weekly scope checks. Have you ever had some human stick a scope jack into your back and read your feelings on an oscilloscope? Disgusting. It's everything you can do to keep your intense hatred from showing up on the scope. Things got so bad that I even pushed current to robots for a while. We robots don't eat or drink, of course, but we love the infinite variations of frequency, voltage, amperage spikes, and the dangerous currents that tingle and push you to the edge. It must be like that for humans, the need to feel something more and the need above all to feel nothing. I'm back to selling to humans again. This time it's burial condo units and burial condo timeshares, but it's still dangerous for robots. Just last week I got, I went into a bar in Moontown to meet a prospect and almost got beat up, dismantled. Anyway, I was walking around looking for someone to sell to. I usually try to pick out older human women who look like they have credits and seem a little depressed. Then I try to make them see what a financial burden their death could be on their kids. And then I saw her, beautiful. I could feel her from across the ped walk. Her chrome shifted in response to me, sometimes following and sometimes leading. The clean night around us, the crystalline buildings, a perfect world of feeling made from perfect information. 
I walked up to the fembot. I didn't need to speak. Our chrome skin spoke for us. Even so, we also talked out loud in the way of humans. Kind of a private joke. Then we switched to high-speed transmission and each sound was like that good part of a short circuit. Like an orgasm at the speed of light, a world of feeling. We talked of who we were and where we'd been, of what it meant, of what humans were really like, and of the sadness and beauty of being a robot. We talked about the deadness of most minds and of the joy of being alive and how to hold that endless, repeating joy and still, somehow, do the chores in life. And then we touched. Our words became frequencies, swelling and changing, waves of red and green, phosphorescent blue, two dimensions twisting into 3D surges and flows of desire, spinning into 4D, five dimensions and beyond. The world disappeared into infinite progressions of colors, of feelings turned into codes, and then suddenly, blackness. And a falling, a feeling of pain and of being torn, ripped away from everything into nothing. I staggered, almost fell through a store window. I was drained, confused. I leaned against the glass and looked at her. You're deceiving me, she said. I am? She frowned, just a subtle tunnel change across her face. The building across the street looked dirty and tired, the bricks dark, the windows covered with dust. Pigeon droppings hung from a sign advertising cyber waves and a dead plastic bag drifted across the mall. She smiled. I noticed the pure dark sky spear pierced with sparks. You have boxes and file cabinets and whole rooms in your mind, secret places, they're locked. So many places that I can't see or feel into. That's what it's like to be a salesman. I never look back, I just lock it up. Well, I didn't say anything. You're only getting a piece of everyone's world, she said. You'll never know anyone without opening yours. She turned and walked away. The night was gray and ugly. I thought of following her. Instead, I walked across the mall. They say in the sales training courses that you can always get what you want. Sure, as long as you don't want anything. I reached the rundown vaulted shop. The cyberwave sign flashed at a frequency invisible to humans, since black market juice was illegal. For the moment, I forgot about selling. I was a buyer now, and all I wanted, and all I ever want anymore, was a heavy jolt of the cheap voltage. I still don't understand, but you're a human, maybe. Yes, I'm sure. You understand this love thing better than I do. Explain it to me, could you, please? the end.